this course today, that is Dakina uh, Rivanga Sutta, Exposition of Offering. This is also very important because uh, we learn uh, numerous things, although superficially it looks like very simple, but uh, when we uh, think of it, we find more uh, profound teaching. This discourse is based on the, the giving. One day, Mahaprajapati Gautami took a new pair of clothes and went to the blessed one after paying homage to him, she sat down at one side and said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, this new pair of clothes has been spun by me, worn by me, especially for the Blessed One. When the Vaishnava let the Blessed God accept it from me out of compassion. Now, this is what Maha Prajapati Gautami said to the Buddha. Who is Maha Prajapati Gautami? She was the second wife of King Suddhodana. Kings those days practiced polygamy. They had more than one wife. When she married Mahamaya, he married also her sister, Mahapajapati. Why she is called Mahapajapati? When she was named, the Brahmins who named her thought if she delivers a girl, and this girl would become <coughs> a queen of a universal monarch and have many, many children. If she delivers a boy, he will become a universal monarch and has many, many children. In both ways, she would have great retinue of people. Pada means people. Pada Pati means head of or leader of people. Thinking this way, they named her Maha Pada Pati. When Maha Maya, Prince Siddhartha's mother, passed away after seven days of his birth because she delivered the baby outside, not in the palace, hospitals, and in room building. It was a very tedious travel back and forth. When she returned, she was sick. And soon after that, she passed away. And then 
महाविद्या प्रति टूक ओवर एंड शी बिगेन हिज फर्स्ट मदर एंड आफ्टर द किंग्स किंग्स ऑफ दोस इन दिस डेथ महाविद्या प्रति
So the Dharma must be in one of these four noble truths. In which one? The suffering, cause of suffering, end of suffering, path leading to the end of suffering. In which of these four most important parts of the Buddha's main teaching? Of course, it indirectly related to suffering. Indirectly related to end of suffering, indirectly related to the, the cause of suffering, indirectly related to the end of the, the translation to the end of suffering. But related, directly related in the noble eightfold path. When you give dharma, there has to be five important segments. Five important segments. There has to be a giver, there has to be a recipient, there has to be a, the things that you give, and there has to be, you have to have an intention, and you have to fulfill all these four. Then only dharma becomes dharma. There has to be a person to offer, person to receive, and something you have to give. You have to have intention, and then you fulfill all this. Then when these five things come together, dharma is complete. Now, what is dana is a good karma. Dana is a very, very good karma. Why it is good karma? Because it is this karma that liberates yourself from samsari suffering. Why is that? Because this karma reduces, minimizes, eliminates your Greed, the cause of suffering. That's what I said, indirectly related to the cause of suffering. And this karma, you have to do with intention. Without intention, you cannot commit any karma. And intention itself is called karma. Chaitanya Hambekya Karma Bhada. Intention itself is a karma. And therefore, it is related to the fourth noble truth. What is very important of fourth noble truth? Samma Sankarpa. Right intention. What are the right intentions? Right intention? There are three kinds of right intentions. Nekkarma Sankarpa, Avyapadi Sankarpa, Avihinsa Sankarpa. Nekkarma Sankarpa means the thought of letting go. Thought of letting go is called generosity. Dana is a practice putting generosity into action, intention. And therefore Dana is in the fourth noble truth. Noble, among, in the noble age for time. Number two is right intention. And therefore, it occupies major place in the Buddha's main teaching. And therefore, we have to keep all this in mind when we go through this discourse and when we will make an offering, giving things to someone. <clears throat> now, when she made this request of the Buddha, asking him to accept this cross, Buddha said, 
give it to the Sangha totally. When you give it to the Sangha, both I and the Sangha will be honored. Now, Buddha's compassion was so deep, you cannot imagine his compassion. When he was going to give it to the Buddha, Buddha said, both me give it to the Sangha. Now, when you are going to have the most valuable, precious, the very expensive item, would you ask to give it to your driver, your servant, somebody else, but below that, below, then you in spiritual growth, in spiritual practice, but Buddha was so great, he said, he asked me to give it to the Sangha. And if you give it to the Sangha, you will offer it to both, me and the Sangha. And Buddha, Sangha is called, among Sangha, they are Arha. Arha, fully enlightened Arha. And Buddha also is called Arha. This way it is so Bhagava Arha. Buddha also is Arha. Not only for this reason, but much deeper and loftier reason, Buddha asked her to give it to the Sangha. Second time she requests, all this time, I had you in my mind, my precious son, I brought you up like my own son. Mahavita Pati Gautami had another son, few days after Siddhartha's birth. What is her son's name? Her son's name is Nanda. She gave Nanda to another lady to bring, another lady to bring him up and brought up her sister's son, Siddhartha. And therefore she wanted to help this offering to the Buddha. As she was not an ordinary person. Third time also she said, please accept this. I intended from the very beginning to give this to you. Then Venerable Ananda. Venerable Ananda always uh, there. And uh, I think this must have happened when Venerable when, when Ananda became Buddha's assistant, helper. That is why Venerable Ananda was able to interfere. You remember in Mahayana Sutra, I mentioned before when the Varananda became Buddha's personal attendant, there were seven other monks. So it became Buddha's attendant, maybe after about 20 years of Buddha's attendant of Elakana. And therefore, when Amapajapati came to offer the robe, Whenever Ananda was his assistant, helper. Whenever Ananda always acted like an advocate, lawyer, he brought up all kinds of reasons for various things. And Mahapajapati Gautami was going to request the Buddha to order her, with another 500 
David, both of you three times, then Narananda gave a new reason <laughs> to our own nation. One of his spirits and souls he asked the Buddha, when the person did you become Buddha only for men? <laughs> can women also attain enlightenment? So what can Buddha say? He cannot say, I attain enlightenment only for men. Women also can attain enlightenment. Then he asked him, why don't you think I am more than my majority person? So, even in this case, then you are another intervene. And he said, Venerable Sir, let the present one accept the new term of laws from Mahapajapati Gautami. Mahapajapati Gautami has been very helpful to the present one. Venerable Sir, as this mother's sister, that is, his mother's means Siddhartha's mother. mother. She is mother's sister, Maya's sister. She was his nurse, his foster mother, the one who gave him milk. She suckled the blessed one. When his own mother died, the blessed one too has been very helpful to Mahamatyapati Gautami. When the one said, it is owing to the venerable one, the blessed one, that Mahamatyapati Gautami has gone for refuge to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. It is owing to the blessed one that Mahamatyapati Gautami abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconducting sensual pleasures, from false speech, and from wine, liquor, and intoxicants, which are the basis of negligence. It is owing to the present one that Mahapajapati Gautami possesses the uh, unwavering confidence in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and that she possesses the virtues left, with, left by and normal ones. Uh, it is owing to the present that Mahapanyapati Gautami is free from doubt about suffering, the origin of suffering, about the cessation of suffering, about the rare uh, the cessation of suffering. The present one has been very helpful to Mahapanyapati Gautami. Now, that means Mahapajapati Gautami was not killing, to abstain from killing. So even the thought of killing she probably might have not occurred to her. And he abstained from uh, these precepts. Uh, which is the basis of the spiritual practice and also she has only again stream entry and therefore she understood the four noble truths the knowledge of four noble truths the suffering, cause of suffering, of suffering and so on. And therefore the present one was very helpful to her. And she wanted to return 
in a favor to you for making her attain spirituality. Now it's a very you cannot imagine the amount of sense of gratitude she had in her mind for making her understand the Four Noble Truth this way. Because attaining the same memory is the best thing one can do. You will, your samsaric journey is limited there. It is limited only to seven types. In samsara, we have suffered so many trillions of trillions of types in so many lives. And if one were to think of the amount of lives we have lived to suffer, attainment of stream entry is the great solace and comfort. She got the confidence in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha trust and faith, that is called avitya prasada. Avitya prasada means the faith endowed with knowledge. Faith, trust, endowed with knowledge. Knowledge of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. As you read in Buddhist literature, you can see these days, you know, when we have any ceremony, we begin the ceremony with the three repetitions, three repetitions, and five precepts. Buddha, Samantha, Dhamma, Samantha, and so forth. In the Buddha's time, people took refuge after the sermon, not at the beginning of the sermon. Buddha delivered the sermon. At the end of the sermon, the listener, a person, would say, Avikanta Mohobodha, Avikanta Mohobodha, Nikutita Mohobodha, Patikana Mohobodha, Munasa Mahatma Mati Pere, Andakareva Tevachota Dari, Chakmani, Chakmanto Rupani Dakinti, Eme Tamagota, Nekoya, and Tamu. When the person was so excellent that he could beautiful, it is just like opening something, something turned down, turning up to see what was inside. It is like, like bringing a light into the dark room for someone with good eyes like to see the object in the room. It is like uh, leading someone bewildered in desert, leading to the city. It is like opening eyes, so clearly you explain the Dharma, and therefore, Antetabhya Pamphita, from this time, till I, till my death, I take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. That is called Avaitya Prasada. That means you understood the Dharma, you got rid of their doubts, Vini Varanatikta, the mind becomes free from hindrances, Udhagatikta, glad mind, Pasamatikta, pleasing mind. With all these things, the mind becomes so clear that he could not restrain himself from taking refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. And then that, that is the time where he would say, I take refuge in the Buddha Dhamma and Sangha after understanding the teaching. And that's when Mahaprasapati Gautami did. When we met the Buddha, she attained the stream entry and then her mind was clear, pure, and had full 100% confidence in the Buddha from the understanding of Dharma and 
shape again, you still enter. So this is what Venerable Ramananda reminded the Buddha. Then Buddha said, that is so on, and that is so. When one person or into another has gone for refuge to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, I say that is not easy for the former to repay the latter by paying homage to him, rising up for him, according him, reverential salutation and polite services and by providing robes, arms, food, resting place and medicine and requisites. When one person or into another has come to obtain action from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct in sexual pressures, from false speech and from wine, liquor and intoxicants, uh, which are the places of ignorance. I say that it is not easy for the former to replay the letter by paying homage to him. Now, Mahapadavati got him about all this as a, from the Buddha, and she was trying to repay her debt to the Buddha by offering a prayer of God. And that is not enough. She must do much more than that. And in order to make her giving more beneficial because of because she owes so much gratitude towards the Buddha by offering this pair of clothes she could not fulfill her obligation she could not repay enough for the favor she got from the Buddha she must do much more than that that more than that would happen only when she offered this cloth close, two pieces of clothes to the Sangha. Why is that? We will discuss this later. And then Buddha said, uh, there are 14 kinds of personal gifts, personal offerings. This also is very important to remember. These 14 kinds of offering. Buddha has not precluded anybody. All beings are included in this, in this, in these categories as a worthy recipient, worthy recipients. Number one. Ananda, one gives a, 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 one, one gives a gift to the Tathagata, accomplished and fully enlightened. This is first kind of personal offering. The Buddha is the supremely enlightened and giving gift to him is the highest, number one. One gives gift to a Pachyaka Buddha. This is the second kind of personal thing. Pachyaka Buddha is partially enlightened. Why partially? He is enlightened or right, but he cannot teach. Sometimes he called silent Buddha. Silent Buddha can appear any time. Even today, although the Buddha's dispensation is still exists, silent Buddha can appear. And this is the second. Uh, one gives gift to an arahant. Uh, this is the of That is third, three personal gifts. One gives gift to a uh, gift to one who has entered upon the way to the realization of truth of arahantship. 
Now, here you must remember there are eight individuals. Who are the eight individuals? Arahant. And one who is on the way to attain Arahantu. Two. Non returner. One who attains the fusion of non returning state. And one who is on the way to attain non returner state. Trans state. And then one who has attained. One sitting state and one who has who is on the way to attain one sitting state. One who has attained stream entry, fusion state, and one who is on the track to attain stream entry state. Now these eight individuals are separate eight individuals. You know there is a belief and teaching, some people accept it, that as soon as you attain the stream entry, next thought moment you attain the stream entry fusion state. This thought moment you are on the stream entry path. Next thought moment you will be stream entry, fusion state. How long is the thought moment? It is such a split second, less than split second. Within such a, such a short period, can you make two individuals? Is there any time for you to prepare meals or something and approach and offer to one who is on the past stage because before you even think of offering that person has been the group extremely the fusion state it is not possible therefore the reality is one attains stream entry now There are three factors to overcome to enter the stream entry. This is how I understand. Three factors are belief in personal self, existing self, personal permanent self, doubt, and purification by following rituals. You follow rituals. To purify the mind. Sila, sila, what the paramasa? Paramasa means attachment to rites and rituals. By becoming attached to rites and rituals, you believe that you can purify yourself. Second is now. Third is belief that there is a permanent self. Suppose you practice meditation. You practice vipassana meditation. In the vipassana meditation, you see three things always anitya, dukkha, anatta. Ani impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. You keep practicing, 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 not once, twice, three, four times hundreds of times, diligently, consistently, repetitively, you practice it. Then one day, you see these three characteristics very clearly. Then your belief of permanent self will totally vanish from your mind. That moment, you enter the stream and the trap. stream entry path and you keep practicing more and more and more then you destroy all the doubts about the who the dharma sound and so forth you still you are in the stream entry path one day you will realize that rights and rituals can never purify your mind 
Christ and it will never purify God. That moment you have taken the esteem and diffusion state. Esteem and diffusion state. So it takes some time for you to attain the esteem and diffusion and to attain the esteem and diffusion state. Therefore you will have plenty of time. Therefore there are two totally separate individuals for people to offer and give. This is how it happens. All the rights are pertaining full around you. You have you is a unified one, attain that state and discourse with other requirements and attain fusion state. So there are eight individuals. So first the Buddha, then Pate Buddha, Marshall, and this eight or to the ten. And then Swallow them. 
This one is doing good things. <laughs> he is sitting on animals. And still if you give something to that snake, that snake, not only to the fish, you can feed the fish and also you can feed the snake. Both the animals. And still you get nuggets. <laughs> is it? That is why I say it just a drug to anyone. It could every living being. Suppose somebody kills others, even human beings, he's immoral and you can do something to it, you get married. Giving gift to an immoral ordinary person, the offering may, may be actually to feed a thousand fold. His only qualification to make the marriage thousand fold is that he is a human being. Much, much better than animal. And so, the scale of marriage increased according to the status of being. Animal is the lower. And then the most corrupt, immoral human is the next because that is a human. By giving it to a virtuous older person, the offering may be extended to repay a hundred thousand fold. If he is a virtuous human being, not already following the normal age forecast, practicing meditation and so forth, but he is a generally moral person. So like that, through the main door showing the, the way the human marriage increases according to the recipient's status. You can give the rest here. And then we go to the give, giving gift to communities, communities, groups. There are seven kinds of communal dharma. Seven. This is also very important to remember. There are seven kinds of offering made to Sangha, Ananda. One gives give to Sangha of both Bhikkhus and Bhikkhus headed by the Vesaka, the Buddha. Now, when Buddha was alive, you can, those days people could give gifts to the Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis headed by the Buddha. You put the Buddha, Buddha will be in the center, Bhikkhus on one side, Bhikkhunis on the other side, and you offer. And you offer this to the whole community of Buddha and Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis. As I mentioned earlier, the Bhikkhunis order must have been there before Mahapajapati came to offer the war in order to make this distinction, in order to make this offering. I mean, explain the category of offering, recipients. And the second is after Buddha passed away, this is the first one. Why Buddha was alive? You give gift to the Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis, said that by the Buddha. Number two, when the Buddha passed away, you give gift to Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis without Buddha. That is number two. Number three is you give gift to the Bhikkhus only. Number four, you give gift to Bhikkhunis only. Number five, you request certain number of 
Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis. Number five. Is it number four or number five? Right. Number five. five. Number six, you ask only for certain number of Bhikkhus. Number seven is you ask only certain number of Bhikkhunis. This is how the seven groups or communities for, are formed and uh, give you, you give a communal dharma. Now, why communal dharma is more important than individual dharma? That is why Buddha wanted Mahapajapati Bhagavatamini to offer the dharma, the, the pair of clothes to the community. When you think, when you offer things to the community, in your mind, there is no individuality, personal preferences. There is no prejudice, biases. When you give something to individual, you give it according to that you are according to your own way of thinking that this is my relative, this is my friend one, this is the one who gives good dhamma to, this one is a learned one, and so forth. There is some personal relationship, personal connection, and that is how your values become limited. When you give dhamma, without thinking any of these things, thinking that I give to the Buddha to all bhikkhus, bhikkhunis and so on, then the marriage to gain is enormous, the highest. So, when the Ananda says, Mahaprajapati Gautam, you was your foster mother, she gives such and such and such and such, and Buddha wanted Therefore, Buddha wanted, yes, therefore I wanted her to get more married. My offering is pair of clothes to the whole community of somebody. Even if somebody goes to a community and requests uh, the community to give a monk for that. So, the person may give, the community may give him very learned, virtuous monk, and then you think, ah, I'm so happy I got a virtuous, good monk. That is not as, that, that does not bring as much merit as you give dharma to the whole community. Even if the monk is virtuous, learned, still the merit is not as great as giving it to a community. Suppose you bring a, you get a monk who is totally corrupt. You simply think that this monk represents the Sangha. This monk represents the Sangha. You don't think of any of his personal qualities and qualifications. You bring that, you bring him home and you do that. There is a story of a person who invited, went to a community and community gave him only one monk. He brought him home and offered dana, thinking that I am giving this dana to the whole community. This monk represents the whole community. With this intention he gave that. After long after life, he went home back to his monastery. He happened to be a very corrupt monk. And 
therefore, this man knew, on to doing that, he knew that he must go to Kara. Then he went to the, this monk, went to this man's house to get a spade to do some work, to dig the land or plant something, he was to get a spade on this man. This man, even did not get up. He pushed the spade by his foot anyway. Not even, he, he did not give it even by hand. Then people who watched this act told him to me, what happened? This morning you brought him in very great respect, washing his feet, put him in you know, one cloth on the seat, and offered dana with great respect. Now what, why, why is this? He said, this morning, I offered dana to someone who represents the Sangha. Now, I know that he does not represent the Sangha. He came to get the spirit to dig the ground. Uh, that is not like it is like this. But when he made the offering to him, thinking that he is representing the Sangha, he got great deal of knowledge. So, the final defense, Dana would give four ways of uh, increasing the marriage. One is the giver is clean, pure, following moral principles, and he is virtuous. And that is he increases the knowledge. Second is the recipient is virtuous, pure, clean. That way they give gain great knowledge. Third is both the giver and the recipients are both equally corrupt. So that they, they get a certain amount of money. Fourth way is both the giver and the recipients are virtuous. In this way, the gift given to the last person is pure. On the other hand, the gift must be gained, the thing that you give, must, you must have, must, must have gained it in an honest way, in an honest way, righteous way. And the mind should be clean before giving, while giving, after giving. So that we have it. And so forth. This is how things increase your, your giving. The giving increases your marriage. Friends, this is all I can do today, this moment. And uh, I hope you learn something uh, from this, this course. And keep these things in mind when you make an offering to any person. With this, I end the today's talk. Thank you.